are back from her voyage to Africa covering the BAL. We have Roz in the house to hand out some roses. Roz, all right, I just ran down the stats. Look, I know you had some roses to give out to the Nets for their efforts in game two. They did fantastic, but what do you have for the Bucks in their efforts in game two? Charlie, for the Bucks, I have to give them a thorn. Um, oh, no. You know, look, the, the Nets are a great team. Right, right. But the Nets are a great team. But to be trailing as much as 49 in that game is just very disappointing for the Bucks. I'm most disappointed by the Bucks' effort defensively. They were literally built for this moment. They built their roster for this time of the season. When I think of Giannis or Drew Holiday or uh, P.J. Tucker or Bobby Portis, I think of defense and physicality and toughness and experience, and I didn't see any of that exhibited in the game. You know, you look at the Nets, and they hit 21 threes, many of them open, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that, one, well, the Nets, you know, really did a nice job of ball movement and creating a lot of offense off of their defense, but the Bucks just didn't make them feel them. You know, the Nets had 27 assists. They were whipping and moving the ball around, having a grand old time, looking like the globetrotters out there. And basically, it's as if the, the Bucks' defense just did not exist. So I got to give them a thorn for that game two, defensive and overall effort. I got to say, I think history has been made here. I don't think we've ever started with a thorn on Roz's Roses. Game is the game. I love this. Look at this. We're just <laughs> flipping the script everywhere. You know who was uh, getting a lot of thorns? I got Roses to give out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know who was getting a lot of thorns on social media after game one was uh, Playoff P. Definitely uh, not happy with the performance. We're some Clippers fans. But let's go back to the Roses, though, from that series. The Jazz are winning the series, obviously. What Rose do you have to give out from game one of that series? Come on, man. I got to give this rose to Donovan Mitchell for his mental toughness, specifically in that second half of the game. The first half for the Jazz and for Donovan just did not really go well. First of all, they're without their veteran leader. Uh, Mike Conley is out. Is not, is out. Um, they trailed by as much as 14 in the game. At one point in that first half, the Jazz actually missed 20 consecutive shots. Like, that's a lot of misses for a group of professionals to miss out there. And and then for Donovan himself, he just didn't even feel like himself physically. I mean, he talked about feeling nauseous and uh, dizzy and having headaches in that first half. Uh, he could have easily just wrapped it up and said, you know what? Game two, I'm going to get back to it. But instead, he took it personally. And on the court, he asserted himself in that second half, early third quarter, comes out, hits the first four shots. And not just any shots where they're just throwing it up there from three or just settling for anything. He put the ball on the floor. He attacked the rim, put pressure on the defense defense and got to the cup. And so one of the greatest ways that Donovan Mitchell really changed the game, he changed the pace of the game and the quality of shot selection in that second half. And everything was going against him in the Jazz, but this young 24-year-old player had the mental endurance to push through it. Rose. Arden and I were talking about the idea that D-Wade might have helped that with a little sideline coaching right at the start of the third quarter. But that's besides. That was for D-Wade, too. Show you right. Show you right. <laughs> now, you also handed out a rose to one Mikael Bridges, who was one of six Suns players who racked up double digits in the game last night. Rod, so in the interest of sticking with that series, who are you handing your final rose to? Ah, oh, come on, man. It's the big storyline. I got to give a rose to, to the veteran, to the point god, to, to Chris Paul of course. Um, for, his, for his game management. And I want to point out, this is not just a rose to Chris Paul because he's 36 and doing great. This is about his high level of execution, um, his efficiency, his timeliness and what he's delivering for the Suns. 26 assists and just one turnover over the course of two games in in this series and the Suns against the Nuggets in game one were able to deliver a knockout punch in the fourth quarter in game two it was really at the start of the second half third quarter they really hit that knockout punch and who's the catalyst for closing that door is Chris Paul because Chris Paul has the ball in his hands so much so much responsibility but he's barely making any mistakes he's not making any there's not even an opportunity for the Nuggets to get a steal and a run out or some momentum or shift the nature of the game 
game off of a turnover because Chris Paul isn't making mistakes. Instead, he's crafting and carving up the defense and getting into the paint to penetrate out, hit bridges, or lob it to Aiton, or take his own shot. And he's just doing it with such understanding and such great value, not only of the ball, but of the moment. So a big time rose, a bouquet to Chris Paul so far in this series. A bouquet. <laughs> that is the note to end on. I mean, I guess when you make history, set some records, you deserve a bouquet, right? All right, Roz, well, thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome home. All right, let's go around the association, shall we? Absolutely. Shall. Storm, dream, I got a word for us. And you know what that word is? Forecast. This is the fourth time the Storm have started 8-2 and two or better through 10 games. Seattle won the title each of the prior three times. So the forecast for the rest of the league, stormy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a dream deferred like until that. next season for Atlanta. Um, in any case, Beaver <laughs> Sky. We're going to go Vander Smooth. Courtney Vander Sloot. Nice little crossover. Step back. Hold that from distance. At a team high 17 on the night. Chicago was rolling all over Indiana. It was a homecoming uh, for Candace Parker, which was great. But Vander Smoot was Vander Sloot was Vander Smooth on the evening.